So I'd like to introduce um, these the two panelists, and, and, and I, I realize that I, I should change the title of the panel to the philosopher and the engineer. And, and, and the reason why is David Lee, um, he got his degree in philosophy from Remen University, and then and, and after he graduated, like any good philosopher, he, was, he, he really cared about ideas. So his first company, CFP.CN, is a marketplace for copyrighted material and pictures. And so you can tell, as, as a philosopher, he really cared about that. And then he joined NetEase as the editor-in-chief, again, to craft and communicate ideas to the Chinese public. And then in 2005, I think it was, is that right? Um, David uh, co-founded YY.com, which is an innovative social communication platform, again, focused on helping Chinese to communicate with each other and to, to entertain each other. Um, so please welcome the philosopher, uh, founder, and chief executive officer of YY.com, David. Thank you, Afrin. And then secondly, uh, to my left, um, is the engineer. So C. C. Zhuang, um, he also actually the same year as David in 1997. Um, he graduated from Beijing Uni uh, 98. So one year later, um, he he graduated from Beijing University with a degree in electrical engineering. And and, and like any good engineer, C. C. wanted to somehow disrupt the world. And so he set up his first company while still in his dorm room, I believe, uh, called Shanghai Weibo with uh, with one of his co-founders. Uh, which was a first-generation search engine. Um, and then after that, um, still thinking about how can I disrupt and how can I cause havoc in, in the world of information, CC went on to found a, a, a few different companies, including um, Sha Wei. And then in 2005, he co-founded um, Chunar.com, which today is probably in the travel industry the most disruptive force. So please uh, welcome the engineer, uh, Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Chunar CC. Thanks, Fritz. And, and, and what's interesting is both companies relatively recently have gone public. Um, so, um, I mean, as um, as the title, uh, this is the next vanguard in kind of the the innovation and disruption that we're seeing in the uh, Chinese internet space. So, so I'd like to kick it off and just ask. Um, you know, um, CC to, to you first. Um, you know, Chunar, even before going public, you had a big brother in Baidu. You had a number of great investors in the company, a great team. Could you let us know, um, you, know uh, you know, what has an IPO brought Chunar that maybe um, you couldn't have done if, uh, while you were a private company? So thanks. Uh, so Fritz basically is the co-founder of Chunar as well. We took together founded Chunar, and uh, after Baidu deal, Fritz left. I took the CEO. So um, to be honest, you know, IPO is just like you know, after you pregnant for ten months, you have to deliver the baby. Uh, so it's a very natural result of the process. Um, certainly, IPO give you a lot of more things. Number one is the reputation. You get a brand event in the IPO. And the second of all, you know, you get a lot more choice on the, you know, uh, financial uh, events. How, if you want to raise some money, you have more vehicles through the debts, through the, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, secondary offerings or extra things. So I think the second things. And the third part is it's giving you the uh, currency to do the M&A. Uh, as of today, you can see as a public company, you have the market valuation and you have opportunity to do some you know, acquisition in both in China and outside of China. I think that's probably the most important things. When you grow the company, you can through the organic growth and now all of a sudden you have another weapon to uh, through acquisition to grow the business. So I think that's the three things we get from the IPO. So, so everyone remember, so CC's words are weapon. So anyone who's a disruptor likes to think about weapons. Um, uh, David, uh, uh, what has the IPO done for YY? Uh, we are IPO from the 2012. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, my English is not very good. Okay. Uh, when I go to the <coughs> IPO roadshow, some investor asked me, uh, what's your weakness? So I, my answer is, uh, our weakness is we did not copy anything from U.S. 
Yeah. So we, our business model is very difficult to understand for U.S. investor. Yeah. So I think the, the difference is uh, when we go to a public company, uh, we cannot uh, live in our own world uh, anymore. Yeah, we must persuade uh, the U.S. investor to under, uh, understand our business model. And uh, uh, to keep the, I don't know how to use English, just keep the original idea, uh, original original idea of the uh, entrepreneur, yeah, yes. So uh, just as uh, the recent years, we are beginning to uh, start starting the education part of the business. Yeah, because we never do any education business. Yeah, we are just a, a technology company. Uh, about 70% of the staff are the tech, tech engineer. Yeah, so when we step into the uh, education business, yes, and we are uh, launched the education part and uh, uh, tell the investor we are going to use the uh, one billion RMB, invest the one billion RMB to this area. Yeah, well, we, we, we are very uh, worried about what the investor will think about it. Yeah, so fortunately, fortunately I think the U.S. investor is very smart. Yeah, they, they understand the, the entrepreneurs think away and uh, support the, the support the management team, yeah. So I, I think the, the, the difficult for the post-IPO uh, company is the, to keep the original idea of the in, in entrepreneur, yeah. Thank you. Uh, CC, um, could you uh, uh, touch upon as well, you know, Tunar is, is, is not like Kayak whatsoever. Um, was, was it a challenge educating U.S. investors? Um, did they get the model? Um, are they smart? So when we're on the road show, uh, there are a lot of investors ask us, you know, why Kayak and uh, TripAdvisor keep a very, uh, you know, uh, pure media models. They never do any transaction, you know. How can you do that? If you do transaction platform, you are somehow compete against your clients. So this is on the first week of the road show. So I have to explain to them why we want to do that. There's value chain difference, landscape difference, etc. So what happens is on the second week, the first day, TripAdvisor announced that they are going to do a transaction platform, and uh, which is a leading company, $13 billion company. They said we have to do it because uh, otherwise we cannot survive in the mobile world. And now the second week is very easy. So when cons you know, investors ask me this question, why you want to do transaction? I said the reason is we are two years ahead of TripAdvisor. So we are much leading the U.S. guys, you know, the way we thought and the vision we have is better than them, you know, they are followers. So that's the easy answer. So, so that's, you know, what I tell U.S. investors. That's great. Well, 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 clearly the strong IPO shows that, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and so both of you made the decision to list in the U.S. Um, and, you know, there's always been a lot of talk, you know, the CSRC, right, the China Security Regulatory Commission, you know, there's always a lot of concern about the tech companies in China, whether they should list in China. You know, what advice would you give the CSRC to make it attractive for you in the future, maybe to have a secondary listing um, I'm here in China. Well, I, I think, you know, just back to uh, David's, uh, you know, words, you know, keep the original idea. So what's the stock market's original idea? Isn't it, you know, uh, have the company go public, have the fair information disclosure, and give all the investor opportunity to invest a great company, right? I, I think that's the original idea, why the stock market comes along. So I think is there something distort between U.S. and China? You know, uh, is that the, the just people just need to ask a very simple question. Is the best company be able to list in China or U.S.? Is there the company has any, you know, mistake or company has any wrongdoing? So we have suffered so many different regulations and uh, also all sorts of the, you know, information disclosure. Uh, it's not our fault, you know, it's the, 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 the mess of the whole system. And uh, who it's eventually. Cost, you know, or it's the cost of the uh, normal investors. Isn't to protect the normal investors. Uh, the, it's the responsibility of the government. 
So I think maybe the question should be back to the government. What are they doing? Are they really follow the original heart? Are they really be responsible for the small investors? Or the cost for the small investors? David, do you have anything to The same to, to the that? engineer. <laughs> so in this case, the engineer and the philosopher agree. So I, I hope on this panel we can find a disagreement, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, let's um, switch a little bit. Um, both of you, I know, focus on product a lot. I, I remember at Chuna, are very focused. David in, uh, in David, in your bio, you focus on product. Now that you're listed in the organizations, are you, uh, so how many people at, at Chuna are today? Uh, 3,000 plus. 3,000, and David, you have about 1,000? We are about uh, uh, 30,000. Uh, 1,300. 1.7,000, right. yeah. I mean, how do you, and um, in, in, in CC once told me that he enjoys being the challenger and being a disruptor. As, uh, he, he used to talk about creating a challenger brand. Um, how do you maintain a level of innovation and disruption at Chunar now that the company has 3,000 employees, it's, 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 it's a much larger entity, there's a controlling shareholder. Um, how do you do that as, 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 as the leader of the company? Well, I think basically two things, you know, find the, um, find the people who wouldn't take challenges and give them the challenge. So what we do is we develop a company into multiple business unit and uh, seed initiatives, and each every business unit have to find a competitor which is much stronger than them, and find the people who wouldn't take that challenge be in the, in the, in the, in the pile of seats. So I think that's how we do. So uh, in turn of the, in, in the China, each every uh, business unit uh, have to facing some, they have to find a competitor, if they, they are very strong, then they have to narrow down the focus. For example, our flight is already number one. So they have to narrow down for the high-end business class or for the international flights. Then you, they can find a strong competitor. So then, you know, create a, a plan. How can we win the competitor uh, within six months or within 18 months? So this is how to keep the company be keep it innovative and disruptive. Basically, you know, always find a much stronger competitor and try to kill them in a short time. Right, so weapons and killing competitors. I got it, okay. <laughs> David. Okay, sorry, I have to use in, in, in Chinese, sorry. I think the company has reached a certain size, and the development has become more difficult. But for us, it's more important because the core is a technology field. It's more important to focus on the technology and the technology field. It's more important to focus on the technology and the technology field. It's more important to focus on the 像我们在这个技术领域，其实提供了非常多的这个研研发的这个这个这个呃研研发的这个努力吧，对。So when company grow big, it's really got difficult to become keep uh, innovative. But you know, Huawei is uh, you know a pretty much a, fo a technology focused company, focused on the online uh, real time uh, communication uh, platform. Uh, they uh, have the most, the strongest, uh, you know, research army in this area. Then,我们就会把这种技术呢，不停的应用到每一个传统的这个领域去。比如说，尤其是我们在这个教育领域，我们发现我们这样的一个技术哈，在整个以前的这个所大家认为的online education领域呢，其实从来都没有人用过。对，就是一个life的一个这个classroom，这个在以前都没有人用过。所以当我们进去之后呢，我们发现我们在很多的领域都是一个颠覆者的角色。so uh, because they have uh, the, uh, the, advanced, the most advanced uh, uh, online real-time uh, uh, communication platform, so they are continually to utilize, adopt their technology platform in the traditional industry. So when they get into the education industry, they find out, you know, they are uh, real-time communication tools became a real-time classroom. It is pretty disruptive in the education industry. Uh, but uh, maybe it is, or killing people or the warrior mentality. Um, but you can tell we have two different views. We have the philosopher and the engineer, which I think um, both provide us some relevant feedback into this marketplace. So thank you very much. Thank you.